Hi everyone and welcome to QBranch's video on programming your FRC robot using LabVIEW. This is Burdette and in this video I will be walking you through how to set up autonomous code in the autonomous independent VI of LabVIEW. Autonomous functions can be added to teleop or periodic tasks VIs, but this will be just for the idea of the first 15 seconds of gameplay in FRC. We are going to assume you have arcade drive and one driven motor. Start by heading to the small screen with the team code. Here we will assume you have defined the drive motors for RK Drive in your Begin VI, as well as a motor named Shooter. If you do not know what I am speaking of, please go back and watch the other videos in the series. This is intended to be the fourth video of the series, and we made the code seen on the screen over the course of the three videos thus far. Once you have Autonomous Independent VI opened up, you will see the familiar gray screen, so go ahead and press Ctrl and E at the same time to see the wiring code beneath. In this video, we are going to assume you just want to set up a default autonomous code. The gray box, known as a case, can actually be used to set up several autonomous modes, which can be selected either automatically using field information like in 2018, or using a custom dashboard selector. We will make a custom dashboard to include a, such a selector in a different video, but for now, we will set up our code in the default selection. This is the case where if no other code is available or selected, then this code will run during the autonomous period of the match. To run autonomously, we're going to set up frames of code with times for each. We will need to insert a timed action case, which looks like a strip of movie film. You will find this not in the WPI Robotics Library, but near the top of the icons with the other cases as seen here on the screen. Click and drag this case to make the size of your liking. We can always expand later. Because each frame is going to run until the time input is up, you will want to make more frames. To do this, right click on the edge of the frame and select Add Frame After. Let's suppose in the first two seconds of Autonomous you would like to drive forward. To indicate two seconds, we will need a timer which looks like a wristwatch and then create a constant. The time is measured in milliseconds, so 2 seconds is a value of 2,000. So now the robot will run whatever code is in this frame for 2 seconds, no matter what. Let's suppose we want to drive. We need to call up the motors as named in the Begin VI, just outside of our frame like this. Now inside the frame, we will insert the arcade drive icon because we are using arcade drive. In Teleop VI, we set the inputs for arcade drive by the axes, but we can't use axes in autonomous, so we will need to create constants to tell the computer what values to give the motors during this period. Remember for arcade that the first number is for the forward and backward power, while the other number is a ratio to make the robot drive either left or right. So if we want the robot to drive straight with 30% power, we'll make constants of 0 0.3 and then 0 respectively. Uh, two notes on this. First, driving with more power will cause any mechanical discrepancies between the gearboxes to become exaggerated, so driving between 30 and 70% power is recommended. Also, in an ideal world, the gearboxes and wheels on the left and right side of your robot will work identically, so the second number will be zero. But in reality, you will need to fine-tune this to account for issues in the mechanical system. A great way to adjust this is to add encoders to your drivetrain. That way it always knows it's driving straight. But that's a little advanced for what we're doing right now, so we'll save that for a different video. If all you want your robot to do in Autonomous is to drive forward for two seconds, then there's only one step to do. You need to create a second frame with a timer to set the drive values to zero. This will stop the robot for the remainder of Autonomous. Otherwise, the robot will continue to carry out the last given command, which in our case was to drive forward at 30%. The danger and the fun of Autonomous is there's very little you can do once the mode begins. Short of touching the e-stop button, the robot will carry out whatever you program the bot to do. Using the e-stop button, by the way, will stop the robot for the remainder of the match. So outside of your robot catching fire or putting a human in danger, don't press that button. So let's suppose you want a motor to run while you're driving forward during autonomous, at the same time. So in this case, just like the drive motors, we're going to need to call up that motor using the same name given in Begin VI just outside of the case. Here, I'm calling up the motor we named Shooter. We then need to use 
the set input icon and create a constant to run during that same two second period. Just like the drive function, we need to set the input to zero in the final frame to make certain all motors stop when we want them to. As a special note, this seems counterintuitive, but you're going to want to disable the safety for both the motors and the drive before it even gets to the timed functions. For some reason, when the safety is enabled, your autonomous will shut off after a fraction of a second and you'll wonder why your code isn't running. So turn off the safeties. And just like that, you have autonomous code to run as your default. Good luck and thanks for watching.